Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is episode seven in my backyard propagation series. This video, I'm just gonna wrap up all the details that we need to do before we're gonna be able to get started in a few weeks with our cuttings. The house still needs end walls, still need to put down gravel in the floor. The two little houses that I made, or the two alternative methods for propagating, still have a few details that need to be worked out on those. And the main thing in this video I'm gonna show you is I have an inexpensive way to create an exhaust fan in this greenhouse. It's been about $25, actually less than $25. The first thing I did was I actually put some bricks under this one and I leveled them out to get this thing off the ground. I'm gonna cut a few slits in the bottom of that bag to make sure the water drains out of it and now it'll have a place to go underneath. Now I've got to uh, line this other one and I think I'm gonna put some legs on it as well to raise it up off the ground. I have some weed control fabric that I'm gonna staple into the bottom of this. I'm just gonna lay it out over top of it and cut what I need. I'm gonna tuck it up in the uh, corners here and uh, put some staples in it. Okay, that should be perfect. I'm just gonna cut the excess uh, fabric off of it right now. And then I'm just gonna put a few more staples in this edge. That should work perfect. I've cut a few six inch legs for this, which I'm gonna screw on now on the edge just to get this thing up off the ground. So there it is, it's got the liner stapled into it and it's a weed control fabric so the water should move through it but not allow the soil to move through it. And then we've got the legs on them and we've got the bricks on the other one so both of them are off the ground and these two are ready to go. So the next step we need to do is we need to get these end walls in and I wanna come in and mark about eight inches here and eight inches in on the other side and that's where our uprights are gonna go. And I'll do the same on both ends of the greenhouse. So now where I made those eight inch marks, I'm gonna put this piece of lumber here. I'm just gonna check that I'm roughly straight up and down, which is right about there. And then I'm gonna mark this on this angle of this piece of PVC here. And I'm gonna make my cut right there. And I'm gonna do that on all four pieces I'm gonna make. I'll have four uprights, one here, one here, one there, and one there on the other end, and then we'll build some cross pieces on them. So the next step here is I'm just gonna screw these boards down to the frame at the bottom, just right through the edge here. Stand them up, and I got that eight inch mark right there. There's one. In the first episode, I had showed these clamps. They're three quarter inch clamps. They're usually used on a electrical conduit, but they fit the outside of this half inch PVC perfectly. So I'm actually gonna take one of these and go on the top of each of these and just screw that right down to the top and that will hold that in place. The other side of this, I'm gonna put a cross member across the top right here and we'll screw that side into that when I get to that point. But I'm gonna start with just these four and I'm gonna make sure these are kind of level before I start screwing them down. Okay, so that's the four uprights. Now I need to put a piece across here and I'm gonna mount the fan to the bottom of that. Um, I'll show you the fan right here. These are the pieces I'm gonna use for the exhaust fan in the little hoop house. This is just a basic uh, bathroom fan. I'm just gonna mount it on the end walls after I build the end walls. It's just got basic three wires that come out of it. The nice part about this, and I think um, my solution for an exhaust fan in a small greenhouse is this is a thermal switch. Uh, this switch, the uh, black wire, the hot wire on this fan will get wired to one side of this and then the hot wire will get wired to the other side. When the greenhouse hits 100 degrees, 
this switch comes on and completes this circuit, when it goes down to 80 degrees, it turns off. So that's what we're going to do. So anytime this greenhouse hits 100 degrees, the switch will be completed, fan will turn on, it'll exhaust air out of the house until it goes back down to 80, which probably in some of the summer afternoons won't. It'll probably just run a lot. Uh, and then at some point in the evening, it'll hit 80 degrees and it'll turn off. I'm going to mount it into the side of this electric box like this. I'm going to bring the wires in from the fan into the bottom. My uh, hot wire coming from where we plugged in the uh, clock um, in that video and wire it to that and it should work perfect. It's going to stick out the side of this box like this. So it'll be, this is the part that it gets exposed to the temperature. So I'm just going to toenail this one in on this side and I made another one for the other side. Okay, so both of those are in. Now I'm gonna run the piece that goes from here across and the piece that goes from there across to here. And then I'll use the rest of these clamps on the top of this PVC to hold it down to it. Okay, so both of these are in place now and this is a far more rigid house and by the time we put the plastic on it and staple it down it's going to be very very rigid so here's what i did here i put another cross member at the bottom right there and then i mounted the fan on top of that the uh, electric comes out of that fan up into this corner i mounted this box here i put that thermal switch inside i ran this electric from here which comes over from where we had mounted the clock i had the extra plug over there so I really can't test this today because it's kind of overcast a little bit and cool outside. I'm not gonna be able to get the temperature in here up to 100 degrees today. But before I get started putting rooted cuttings in here in a few weeks, I will have been able to test it a few times. And here's the back of it. The only thing I don't like about this, but this fan was only $15, so I'm not doing a whole lot of complaining about it, is it exhausts here. It doesn't exhaust out of what would have been the top and the ceiling. It exhausts out of the side, so I'm gonna get a three inch PVC elbow right here and just turn it out and then we'll work the plastic around that when I put the plastic on. But this should work perfect. That switch comes on when the house reaches 100 degrees and it goes off when it goes back down to 80 degrees. So that should work perfect. We're trying to keep it cool in the upper two thirds with that exhaust fan and we'll keep it cool in the bottom third with our mist irrigation. So the last thing I'm gonna do on this operation for this episode is get the plastic in the bottom of this and get the pea gravel in. And that's gonna be wrap this up. All we're gonna have to do to get started is get our soil mixed, get our box over there filled, get our flats filled, and I'm gonna wait to put the plastic on this until closer to the time that we're uh, uh, gonna be putting cuttings in here. And at that time I'll test that fan and make sure it's working. There's no reason why it shouldn't. That thermal switch is about $7 on Amazon. I'll link that in the description of this video. And that exhaust fan was $15. I had the little box and I wish I'd have had a larger box. That one's for a single outlet and I wish I had one for a double outlet. So that's the end of episode seven of the Backyard Propagation Series. We're gonna take a break now for a few weeks and then I'll come back when it's time to start taking the cuttings in May. And for the next few weeks, like I said, I'll be running the Blueberry Series. Just a couple things that I may not have shown all that well. And one thing is the reason we put the plastic and the gravel down in the bottom of that house is because I need a barrier between that soil and our cuttings in that house. One, it will help with weeds, obviously, but not forever because the weed seeds will come in on top of it over time and it won't matter as much in time. But it does create a barrier between any disease issues that might be in that existing soil underneath and what we're gonna be putting in that house. So it's very important to put some sort of barrier between the ground and your cuttings. So that's what we've done there. And then I just used the gravel on top of it just to create an easier service to work on top of. The second thing that I may not have shown all that well is wiring that thermal switch. That fan has the three wires. It has the black, white, and green, like most things do. 
the green is the ground and it'll just go directly to your ground wire from whatever electric service you're running to it. The white will go to the white just straight on and then the thermal switch goes in, in the middle of the black wire. So you'll splice the black wire and put one on one side of the wire on one side of that thermal switch and the other coming off the other side and to the fan and that's how it works. It just sits in the middle of the hot wire which is the black wire. So thank you for watching my video and if it was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos and don't forget in maybe six to eight weeks we'll get started on cuttings finally in episode eight. Thanks for watching.